the function f is defined as f of x is equal to 2x plus 7 all over 5. Find the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. What we will do first is bring the expression f of x is equal to 9 to the 4. There we have it. f of x is equal to 9 and we need to find the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. Our first step will be to write the algebraic expression for f of x in the place of f of x, which is done by a simple substitution. Substitute the symbolic f of x for its algebraic expression right there. Then, all we need to do is solve that equation in finding the value of x. First of all, let us eliminate this 5 that we are dividing by, by multiplying by 5, and we will multiply by 5 on the right hand side also. By multiplying the left hand side by 5, 5 will be eliminated from the left hand side. Then we will have 9 times 5 on the right hand side. Of course, 9 times 5 is 45. Then we will go straight ahead and eliminate this 7 that is added on the left hand side. We will do that by subtracting 7 and do the same on the right hand side in order to balance the equation. Subtracting 7 from the left hand side, it will be eliminated and of course on the right hand side we will have 45 minus 7 which turns out to be 38. 2x is equal to 38. Then, finally, find the value of x by eliminating the 2 by which it is being multiplied on the left hand side. And we will do that by dividing by 2. By dividing by 2, the 2 will be eliminated from the left hand side, but we also need to divide the right hand side by 2. 38 divided by 2, and that is equal to 19. x is equal to 19, and 19 is the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. 19 is the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. Although we are highlighting it here and, you know, dressing it up for the next slide, we will not use it much. f of x is equal to 9, x is equal to 19, it means that f of 19 is equal to 9. And we are saying that we should bear this in mind. For the next slide, let us go to the next slide and see what is in store. Now, we will recount the requirement of the problem that we solved on the previous slide. It says, find the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. Hence or otherwise, determine the value of f inverse of 9. Now we know that in isolation, in order to find f inverse of 9, we just find f inverse of x, then substitute 9 into it. However, we have here hence or otherwise. We did hence on a previous slide. Now we are going to do otherwise on this slide. Therefore, we are not going to make use of the fact that if f of x is equal to 9, 
then x is equal to 19. Therefore, f of 19 is equal to 9. We are not going to make use of that fact in solving the problem on this slide or on this occasion. What we will do is do it in isolation. Do it otherwise. Do it separate and apart from what we have done on the previous slide. Otherwise, that's what we are going to be focusing on. For otherwise, we will first find the inverse of the function, but we will not do it by transposition. We will find the inverse of the function, but it is not going to be by transposition. We do it all the time. By transposition, we will show another method of getting it done. f of x is equal to 2x plus 7 over 5. What we will do is outline each step in the operation of the function. Then we will do the reverse of each step and we will do them in the reverse order. Let's go. Consider the arithmetic composition of the function. First of all, multiply by 2. That's what we are doing first. Multiplying x by 2. Then, we add 7. And finish up by dividing by 5. Multiply by 2. Add 7. Divide by 5. For the inverse function, we need to do the reverse of those steps but we need to do them in the reverse order so we'll go with the reverse of this one first multiplying by 5 then of course in reverse order add 7 we will subtract 7, finish up by multiplying by 2, then we will what? Do the reverse of this one, which is divide by 2. We have a little template here that we will use to complete the inverse of the function with these being the steps that we need to follow. Multiply by 5. Subtract 7. Divide by 2. So there we have it. And we have the inverse of the function as required. On this occasion, we will find the inverse of the function, which we have done. So we will substitute 9 into it. Now that we have found the inverse of the function, we will Evaluate it when x is equal to 9. At this level, the entire process should be done in our minds. And what we are talking about is the process of finding the inverse of that function that we have just completed. At this level, the entire process should be done in our minds. So we can look at the function and write its inverse down. That's what we should be able to do at this level. And we can do that by following a process similar to what we have outlined right here. Do not forget, we have our inverse function. There it is. Now that we have found f inverse of x, we will finish up by substituting 9 into it, which is we will be finding f inverse of 9. So this is your f inverse of x and we want f inverse of 9. We therefore need to substitute 9 right there. And all that we need now is to simplify this arithmetic expression. 5 9 is 45. 45 minus 7 that's 
Then 38 divided by 2, and that's 19, and we are done. We see that other is not wise after all. The great amount of work that we will have to do for only one mark tells us that hence is the more appropriate approach as it usually is. Hence is what we usually do when we have a problem that says hence or otherwise. And you know, I always tell my students other is not wise. And we have seen it here. The great amount of work that we will have to do for one mark tells us that otherwise is not the means by which we should solve this problem. But we should go to hence as it is usually the very best way. The simplest and most straightforward way. When we see otherwise in a problem, all it means is that there is an alternative method or maybe alternative methods that we may use which are allowed. They are not going to penalize us for that. Almost always, they are not the most efficient. And efficiency is not only in time but in space. We need to use as little space as necessary along with the fact that we need to be very conservative as it pertains to time. Teachers and instructors, get unlimited access to teaching aids for your virtual classrooms at richardjamesmathematicsresources.com. Also, this is the best place for the hearing impaired to master mathematics as long as you are literate.